Hello and welcome to Frank's School, 117th day of the six year first video. Hydra in my head withdraws. The battle was not over, but uh, I, Hydra had attacked. Then uh, there were casualties. And, but then there's a little bit of a quiet time in a sense. This is going to be close to being autobiographical, and so I'm going to try to be pretty brief about this. I'm not trying to do that. I'm trying to identify uh, sources of where did I come up with my strange thinking. But there was a while where there was not so much that's so different and so new. Uh, I, had writ I had had myself isolated at the end of that last video, just frank, there I was alone wasn't quite true. My family had supported me. My youngest sister in particular, Barbie, was involved in that migration of April Fool's Day, 1974. I think she drove one of the vehicles, or um, and, and my mom and dad in another vehicle were coming behind. I had a pickup truck that would not pass inspection. We had to, we left New Hampshire before dawn because the, it, it, the inspection had run out and it would not have passed. Uh, I was I had a VW van that barely ran. Now, once it got going, it was okay. A bright yellow VW van I'd bought for $250, I think, which was too much. Uh, but in any case, uh, my family was there for me, but they lived in New Hampshire. So ultimately, I was alone from, I mean, physically alone from the family. Uh, I had animals. I had three uh, marmosets, uh, monkeys, uh, smaller than squirrels, really. Uh, and uh, I had had them ever since Brazil. There was uh, there was Mikaka, who lived to be ten years old. There was Segundo, uh, spunky little guy. And there was João. I had three. I had had five, but two of them died. The, the females in 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 baby birth <laughs> uh, in New Hampshire. So I had three marmosets. I had a puppy, uh, a female a Labrador retriever named Miz. Um, so I wasn't completely alone, and I had the neighborhood. This, I had been a boy here. Uh, it's the only place in the world and in time, I think, where I was consistently called Frankie because they remembered me as a little boy. That my, my grandfather was well-liked in this area, and, and I had, you know, every minute of my boyhood that I could, I had spent here. So I had a neighborhood, and I'll say more about that in a little bit. I arrived here with as much as those vehicles would, would carry, my tools, uh, uh, not a very good set of tools, but I had a table saw, sort of, uh, $35 I'd paid for that at a sale. And, uh, I had a lot of books, uh, which I ended up using as insulation. I built shelves in this tiny little Sears house. I built shelves against the outside walls and put the books there. Uh, to, to try to help with the thermal mass and the insulation to even stay warm. It was April, so I did have time before the next winter. Uh, I, uh, I was able to work with uh, recycled material, fallen down buildings that I cleaned up. My grandfather, there was quite a bit of lumber here and there was so much need. Uh, the J.J. Uh, Camp's ranch had been basically neglected for 11 years, I think since he died. and. Uh, if you looked at a fence, it, it fell down. I mean, there was so much stuff to do, uh, which which I did. Uh, I was living at that time, basically, I think back of it, crackers and tea, saltines, you know, beans and rice, which I had learned to basically live on in Brazil, and waffles. That, that was kind of my diet at the time. Uh, now, my neighbor, one of my neighbors in particular, Ronald, I put him in the list, although he and I had a falling out later which was too bad, but, but anyway, I put him in that list of a few, about five, four or five people who taught me so much about working with my hands. He was one of them. Mill worker, but he had those skills. He could butcher, he could do all, all that stuff, and he lived right next door. And they almost took me under their wing. His wife, Margie, particularly tried to do what she could. I mean, in a sense, there was something piteous about me because there I was alone. Uh, uh, and uh, in any case, it was through her doing, actually, that she talked me into going to the local Lutheran church, uh, just go to try it out. And so I said, okay. You know, I didn't really have a car that, you know, it sort of ran. But So I went. And the very first time I stepped into the church nave, I was in a choir room uh, because they figured out I could sing. This is a tiny little church. 
Before too long, I actually was conducting a church choir, sort of, but you can't imagine how tiny this was. And I was a Sunday school teacher. Uh, you know, they figured, hey, you got an education, you, you ought to be able to teach. Um, and uh, they didn't seem to care or know that I was a Hindu. It didn't, it didn't matter. I could teach the material. Um, and uh, maybe now I can just, oh, I, I should say that I'm talking about a period that's really maybe not quite two years. Uh, uh, but ultimately, uh, Hydra, when it, was, when it withdrew, as I'm going to tell you probably in the next video, or at least start to, for about 35 years, there's not too much to say from Hydra. Uh, but anyway, teaching. Eventually, I think I collected a total of $30, maybe $35, in unemployment compensation. Uh, it just took forever because I'd been in New Hampshire and uh, all that stuff. So, you know, but then I, uh, you know, I thought, well, I'll be a carpenter. I'm healthy, I'm skilled, I'll find a job as a carpenter. I probably could have, but I tried substitute teaching. And there I found, if anything, well, Ronald, but if anything here would jump out as a source, teaching. When I found, when I went into those schools, the public schools, there I found the life that I, I mean, what I mean is the liveliness, the spirit, that seemed to be so empty in in the United States. Uh, the stuff, the world I'd lived in in Brazil where you could hear the neighbors, the chickens going down the streets, I mean, so alive. There it was. It was in those buildings. The, the children were all being gathered together into these buildings, centralized, <laughs> you know, how much more so probably when it was decentralized. And there was the life that I had missed. And uh, I, you could almost say I fed off that <laughs> vitality is maybe is a better word. I fed off that vitality then for quite a few, well, a lot of years. Uh, all right, well, that was a shot. Sorry if it was too biographical, autobiographical. Bye for now.